We love our Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. They are renowned worldwide, but not everyone can enjoy them. People with sensory sensitivities may find the diverse range of sound loud or disruptive, and that's why the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra is offering a sensory-friendly concert designed for patrons of all ages in an inclusive and relaxed environment. And here to tell us more about the performance called Music of Flight and Fantasy are Suzanne Perina with the PSO and Corey Antonacci, a music therapist at Children's Hospital, as well as illustrator Stacy Innerst. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so Suzanne, this sounds really such a wonderful opportunity. Explain how the performance works and really how it's different than a traditional performance. Sure, the performance is really for any age individual. Uh, we're um, targeting especially people who have um, some concern of going to a typical concert and the concert um, also focuses on individuals who may have autism, any kind of hearing or visual disabilities mm -hmm. and it's a relaxed environment, non-judgmental, mm -hmm. welcoming, so we'll help hope that everyone can enjoy the, the program. We have an hour of pre-concert activities okay. from 1.15 to 2.15. Nice. And then the concert starts at 2.30. It's a 45 minute concert and it's interactive. And it has all different aspects around flight and fantasy music characters and stories. Well, we're looking at some of the characters behind us. I see everything from Harry Potter to E.T. to Star Wars. This looks like fun. Yes, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. It should be a so lot of fun. So it's music from a lot of those shows and movies we might remember? Yes, absolutely. And Lawrence Lowe, who is conducting the concert, conducted it three years ago. This will be our third concert, our third sensory friendly concert. And uh, he will be talking in between the pieces, okay. but we also have Stacy who will be illustrating. We have Katie Williams who will be singing, and we have two of our players who will be playing um, a piece, Fluffy and the Harp, oh, from the goodness. Harry Potter and um, uh, movies. So it should be lots of fun. Wow! And so, Stacy, you're going to be illustrating. I know you for your wonderful books. No, oh, thank you. And uh, some involving music. I understand. Has this always been a passion of yours? It has. It's been uh, a, a kind of music and art have kind of grown up together mm -hmm. with with me. And uh, so I'm I'm delighted. This is my first experience doing the anything with the symphony and doing the sensory friendly concert. So tell me how you're going to be on the stage or people will be able to see your works as the music is going on. Well, I, I'll be on stage and drawing on a surface interpreting a piece of music ah. and uh, the the image that I'll be drawing will be projected on a screen. So, so do you know what the music is going to be yet? Or you I gonna, do. Okay. Are you going to tell us? <laughs> uh, it's pure imagination. Okay, okay. And are you going to kind of just see how you feel, or do you have some ideas in mind? I have some ideas okay, in mind. Okay, very I'm going nice. to rehearse it. Well, that's smart. You do have a big audience watching I you do. draw. <laughs> will you be doing it in pencil, or what will you do it with? I think uh, at this stage, I think I'm going to be doing it in uh, ink. Okay. Some kind of something where I can get an expressive line. Okay, so. okay, and all the more reason to practice a little ahead of time because cool. you can't erase the ink. <laughs> exactly, it's permanent. Well, that sounds like such a cool idea, especially for children or anyone who maybe it might help them to visualize the music. Tell me how even just having art as part of it can make a difference. It absolutely makes a difference. Music and art are multi-sensory experiences. And something that we have seen and we've known through research and many years of our work um, as a music therapist in particular is people learn different through music. Music taps into a different portion of the brain for retention and memory. But all of that aside, the reason I think that this experience is so incredible for our patrons of the symphony is Music is a basic human right as a vessel of self-expression. That is something that nobody should be denied. You know, every individual who walks through the door of the symphony should really be able to have that opportunity to express themselves. Whether they have verbal means of expression, they may be able to do it through an instrument. They may be able to do it through art. And that's really our goal. And we started back in 2014. I sit on a committee with the symphony called the Accessibility Advisory Committee. And what that is, is it's a group of individuals in the Pittsburgh area who work with individuals of all abilities to make a better community, to make Pittsburgh the best it can be. Um, so some of those people have clinical experiences. Some of them sit in administrative roles. But as a whole, we are all there finding what are the ways that we can make the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, which we know is this world-class organization, 
organization. How can we make this accessible for every single patron in the Pittsburgh area? So give me an example of why it might be difficult for someone to attend a regular performance and how you're making it adaptive for them. So some of the things we may change are the dynamics of the music. You know, we know we can have large crescendos and day crescendos, but they may be a little more muted and a little softer for this performance. The lighting, all of these sensory experiences may be toned down just a bit. And I really think that it makes a big difference for these children and adults who come to the symphony. And I have to say, you know, there's so many reasons that it's wonderful to be a Pittsburgher, but watching the symphony really take the initiative with the help of the Accessibility Advisory Committee to transform musical experiences for our people of Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. I'm so proud to be a Pittsburgher. Well, it's really I, incredible. Absolutely. It is wonderful that everyone can go. And I've heard parents say, you know, it's wonderful to be surrounded by people who understand if you have a challenge and you need to get up, that's mm -hmm. okay. Everyone around you knows what you're going through. Is that absolutely. part of, you hear right. that from the families too? All the time. Yes. Yeah. And it's actually really important that those families feel like they can get up and leave and go to the quiet room if they need to during the concert. They can move back in their seats if they need, need to. We have a lot of accommodations. We have um, an ASL interpreter. We have an open captioning for um, the text that will be read during right. the concert. We also have um, a hearing loop for T-coil um, and also an infrared hearing system as well as large print programs and braille programs. So we're really trying to address all of the mm -hmm. needs of our patrons. And the most important thing is that our ushers and our front of house staff are very welcoming. They're very mm -hmm. non-judgmental. So mm -hmm. families have come back to us th through mm -hmm. the post-concert surveys and said that's the most important thing Wonderful. is that they felt welcomed and they could attend as a family, mm -hmm. which is it, it very rare for a family right. with a child or a loved one with a disability. Right, and then especially to be able to go as the whole family, I'm yes. sure it's a special experience. Well, yes. thank you all for making this possible. Thank you. So come uh, see the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra's sensory friendly concert, Flight and Fantasy. It's coming up Saturday, June 17th at Heinz Hall. Pre-concert activities start at 1.15. The concert itself begins at 2.30. Tickets are just $15, and you can get more details and pre-visit materials online. Look for that link at kdka.com slash ptl.